Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Israel Brief, brought to you by Now the Land. I'm your host, Relly Marks, bringing you the top stories from Israel every Monday to Thursday on this very platform. And uh, how are you all doing? I have to tell you that there is a an air of very, very cautious optimism in Israel as we slowly start to come out of lockdown and reopen our economy, which I think for the whole world is vital at this moment. So without further ado, let's take a look at those top stories making headlines. And as it does every day, the uh, COVID-19 dominates news headlines in Israel is no different. So let's take a look at Israel's stats at the moment. From the outbreak of, or the start of the outbreak of the pandemic, we have had 16,314 confirmed cases of COVID-19. We have had 238 fatalities. However, we have not had any new fatalities since last night. At the moment, we have 90 people in serious condition, 70 on ventilators, 5,549 have made, uh, who are, sorry, are still currently sick, and 10,527 who have made full recoveries. And uh, those stats are very, very important as Israel pla uh, carries on plotting its exit strategy because there are certain metrics by which we will measure this by. And uh, so far, the numbers continue to uh, to look good, to hold their downward trajectory, and of course, that's what we want. However, in his address to the nation on uh, Monday night, the Prime Minister did say that, you know, if there is a second wave, we are busy preparing for uh, any kind of eventuality. But at the moment, everything is looking okay, and we're slowly, slowly starting to open up and today's latest development, in fact, while this is being recorded, the municipality of Tel Aviv and restaurant owners are meeting to discuss the possibility of reopening restaurants by next weekend. How they will do this is, uh, of course, uh, under discussion. And also, um, the Minister of Education said this morning that they will start to reopen some kindergartens and daycare, which is uh, very, very important because many of the parents are going to start going back to work very, very soon. All this taking place with the background of strict COVID-19 um, temperature measuring, hygiene, social distancing and wearing masks. Very, very important that we keep maintaining this. In other news, uh, the Israel Air Force early hours of this morning struck targets in the Gaza Strip and this is in response to rockets that were fired from the Strip into southern Israel. Thank goodness nobody was hurt, there was no damage. It did land in an open field and it's a reminder that even though we are battling COVID-19 globally, we still face other kinds of threats. And uh, also news making headlines is that uh, we heard from a former Mossad official saying that the possibility of a prisoner swap with Hamas uh, in order for us to get the uh, remains of Hadar Golden and Oron Shaul who fell during uh, Operation Protective Edge as well as two civilians who are still being held captive in the Strip back as part of a prisoner swap is uh, making progress. However, a unnamed official from the Palestinian side said uh, that talks are still in the early phase. And of course, this is something that we will be following very, very closely as uh, the, they progress. And the last item of news I want to talk to you about is something very, very serious. And it doesn't just affect us here in Israel, but affects uh, uh, people around the world. It's a societal issue, but it's one that, uh, on one hand, I'm very, very happy that the Israeli mainstream media is giving a lot of attention to this because it needs our full attention. And that is the issue of domestic violence while uh, COVID-19 is happening. For many people in lockdown, it doesn't give them a sense of any kind of security. Many women are trapped with their abusers uh, or their partners uh, who beat them or abuse them in any way. 
And uh, one thing that I'm extremely proud of is that WITSO, the Women's International Zionist Organization, an organization I'm a part of, has uh, worked tirelessly not only with our hotlines that uh, are available for women needing help, which are running at full capacity, but also the only two hotlines for uh, violent men who hopefully will call before they act out violently and uh, this week the opening of our third shelter to provide necessary shelter for women and their children who have to be removed immediately from the home and put somewhere where they are safe and where they can be quarantined. However, since the outbreak of the pandemic, five women in Israel have lost their lives as a result of domestic violence. And earlier today, there were demonstrations in Jerusalem, Tel Aviv and Beersheba against rising violence. And it's something that is not an issue particular to Israel. It's not an issue that Israel is exempt from. It's a societal issue that all of us, no matter where we are in the world, need to start tackling and need to start talking about. So these are the top stories making headlines today. Uh, don't forget you can check out our content on our website at www.layoftheland.online. We also send out a weekly newsletter and this is quite popular. So if you would like to be on our mailing list, pop us a message via our Facebook page or via our website. And while you're on our Facebook page, don't forget to share the content or give us a like and a follow or a like or a follow. And also, if you want your uh, Israel Brief uh, hot off the press and on YouTube, we have a YouTube channel. You can find us at the Israel Brief. Simply click on the subscribe button. So with the Wednesday edition of the Israel Brief, I hope that you are all safe, that you are all healthy. I'm Erlene Marks. We'll speak again tomorrow.